Hey you guys, it's Peter, and I'm back. Of course I'm back, I'm not going anywhere. Boost! I'm YouTube famous now. Available in 1955, the year of the rumble. Because we're going to talk about the rumble, maybe today, okay? So let's get right into this video. I love this stuff so much. I totally do. I love everything about YouTube. I love all of it, and I love to remain Switzerland in between all of it. So anyway, let's just get right into what happened. So the other day, I made a video about Jake Paul called Jake Paul Lost at the 100,000 Subscribers. What happened? And um, somebody incidentally commented underneath the video, uh, 200,000 now. <laughs> but now he's back up and he's gaining subscribers again. So all's good in love and war, right? Anyway, what had happened, what had happened was, this story is so boring to me, but it's just so funny to watch just all of it unfold with these YouTubers that have millions upon millions of subscribers. Okay, when you think of it in those terms, when you think about somebody having 10 million subscribers, that's like a country. That's like having a country of subscribers. Can you even imagine? Jake Paul is basically the president of a YouTube country. That's some scary shit right there, okay? So anyway, I'm watching all this unfold and what had happened. What had happened was <laughs> that Jake Paul's good Judy, this Megan girl or whatever her name is, she was out at a bar, the Warwick or something like that. I never heard of this bar. Who'd care anyway? So they're at this bar and she's drinking. They're all drinking and she sees FaZe Banks. You know FaZe Banks. Anyway, PP, do you like FaZe Banks? PP's like, I love FaZe Banks. I love his hats. We like his hats. So anyway... So uh, she's like, oh, that's Faze Banks, and he's kissing some other girl, and blah, 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 whatever, on his girlfriend, and then apparently Faze says, oh, this is all allegedly, allegedly, although there's footage of this inside, security footage of this inside the club, right? So, uh, so Faze is like, oh, what are you doing messing with me? Let me drag you by your neck, and drags her across the floor, allegedly, okay? And then she goes home, and she says all this stuff to Jake Paul, and says, and this is a very, very serious topic, so I'm joking about how it was told right now. But wait till the end of this video, because you know if you watch my videos, baby, there's always a lesson, okay? So we're going to talk about abuse in just a second here, because it's important. Um, so anyway, so she comes home to Jake Paul, and she's like, Faze Banks did all this kind of stuff to me. And Jake Paul's like, oh, no, ma'am, I'm not having that, right? Not for one of my Team 2 grinding members. Uh-uh. So he and, I don't know, this, I don't even know who these people are. They make this video, and they put out about what happened, right? We don't just call up people. We, I, I, this is one of the problems, okay, with our world, is that you don't call somebody and say, hey, dude, what, was, what were you doing? Like, my friend said you assaulted her. We've called the police, okay? Like, we make a video about it. That's where we go with this, right? To social media. So that's what you do with it. So what's the motive there? I always, when anything happens to anybody in the world, like when somebody acts out, if it's out of character, which this isn't out of character for them to make a video, I'm always interested in what's your motive, you know? And this will play out because last night Keemstar had rice gum, uh, FaZe, and then this Alyssa girl, Alisa, Alyssa, I don't know. There's so many of these names are similar to me that I can't keep up with it. And they had her on the phone and he interviewed them and talked to them on the phone. But now it wasn't really like a formal interview, but this is where I'm getting my whole story from. Y'all can't see it right now, but I did something today that I don't ever do. As James Charles calls me a drama account elite executive of the West Coast, East Coast. I have all of my post-it notes right in front of me because, baby, I couldn't keep up with it. But I'm going to tell you that I had some issues with this whole story. So let me tell you, okay? Not with how it was interviewed or not with what they said, but I just think it's very, very serious, you know? So I'm watching all this. It's not just hype and let's get views and let's take people away from 10 million and who's right and who's wrong. It goes deeper than that, okay? It just does. And people need to really think about their motives and their gig on YouTube. And one of the things that was said last night was that supposedly there was some other situation that happened with Jake Paul and a fan's father. And they didn't make a video about that, but they made a video about uh, FaZe Banks and why didn't they... Are we, we didn't wake up yesterday. We know it wouldn't have got the views. I mean, it would have got some views. Anything he puts out gets views. Allegedly, that's what happened. So anyway, I feel like Sanders Kennedy now having to say allegedly all the time. I swore I would never do that. But anyway, so I'm watching this interview last night. So then Jake Paul, he makes the video. Then Logan Paul comes out and he makes a video, video defending his brother. Oh, Logan, you shouldn't have done that, okay? Because you're going to look like an ass too if it comes out and y'all are a bunch of liars. I'm just saying, right? Or do these kids all think that they are so above all of this that they can just do whatever they want 
and everybody, yes, they will. Why? Because they have 20 and 10 and 5 million subscribers. We are enabling this as a society, okay? And this is a problem. So I'm watching this, you know, well, and Kim starts sitting there. He's got them all on the phone, right? And so apparently uh, last night, uh, I guess it was last night early, uh, Rice Gum, <laughs> FaZe Banks, and this Alicia girl, and all these people, Alyssa, Al Alisa, I'm sorry, girl, I'm mispronouncing your name, okay? I'm just going to call you Lisa Lisa and the Cult Jam. So Lisa Lisa and the Cult Jam and all them, she said like one thing on the whole video, but it was kind of powerful what she said, so we're going to talk, oh, profound, given the story. So I'm watching this, and I'm like, mm-hmm, mm -hmm, in my office listening to it today, right, 18 minutes of this, and it was very interesting, because now you're hearing a completely different side of the story, and then I had also listened to or watched FaZe's interview with Keemstar the other day, and um, so I'm watching all this, and they had been hashtagging out, they had been tweeting out, hashtag clout gang, okay? Well, they were talking about what the clout gang is. So the clout gang is basically Rice Gum and FaZe Banks and all of these people. These names just kill me. No, Judy Smith and the crowd, right? I mean, even Lisa Lisa and the Colt Jam. So anyway, so it's all these people moving into this big house. Sound familiar? Right. So they're like, yeah, everybody's going to probably say that we stole this idea um, from Jake. Uh, but FaZe actually was the originator of it, and FaZe did it with this whole gaming thing. We're all going to move in this big house, and this is what they said. <laughs> this is, I got to go to my post-it notes. Um, everybody wants to be part of this team, right? This big team that they're going to have, and they're going to live in this whole house. And then they were like, yeah, we're looking for the talent. We're basically the ones looking for the talent, but everybody, we've got big, ba they kept on talking about big backers, right? We have big backers that um, are going to do all the legal and all the business. They didn't say the legal issues they said all the legal they use that word right who does that sound like i mean this almost kind of sounds like a certain kind of mentality do you know what i'm talking about so i sit there and i continue to watch it and all this kind of stuff and they're talking about all this kind of stuff i'm like reading my post-it notes i'm just gonna pick it up who gives a shit okay um and so then they talk about jake paul i'm gonna take one down at a time right and um i'm sitting there and they're like oh we're gonna you know meet with jake paul on tuesday so now everybody and their mothers made these uh, videos well he, oh, hold on a second phase has not made a video and he talks about why he hasn't made a video his people talk to the people at the warwick the bar and they have the security footage but they're not letting the third people I, they're not letting anybody outside see the footage and whatever, but they're telling him, we tracked you through the whole bar, and what they're saying happened didn't happen. And Keemstar is like, well, if this, if Jake Paul lied about this, and this girl got on camera and lied about it, because you know they're saying that, like, her bruises look fake and all this kind of stuff, right? So, wait till the end of the video. I told you there's going to be a learning experience here. So... If, uh, you know, like, if they're liars and they're ruined forever, well, people will still follow them. I watched that and I was thinking to myself, no, people will still follow them. People will forget about this in two months. It happens all the time. Watch us drama channels. We've been around forever and maybe don't nobody watch us, but they watch all these other people that we talk about. So anyway, these bad seeds, you know how that is. So anyway, so I'm watching all this and they're like, they're like, yeah, we're going to meet on Tuesday. Um, we're going to meet with Jake and we're going to hash it out. I'm like, oh, what is this? A rumble pony boy? I mean, haven't we learned how this all, did y'all not see the outsiders? Do, don't we know how this all plays out in the end? And so then I'm sitting there and I'm thinking about this, right? And they're talking about like, okay, so Jake, he has this really, they, they Rice Gum gives him props and he's like, okay, so, you know, Jake has all these people live in this house. They all benefit from it. They all put out a lot of talent. It all works for them, right? You know, it's like Tana Mojo kind of has the same thing going on, but she just has a house and 15 drag alongs that just come along and they just don't have anywhere to go. And she makes them famous and puts them on tour. What? Why would you pay to pay money on a good tour? Okay. To go see, uh, T Tana Mojo's Good Judy that you ain't never met sit on a stage. I wouldn't have even paid to see Bonnie Tyler sing Total Eclipse of the Heart today, okay? On the Eclipse. No, ma'am. Go see one of Tana Mojo's good friends. What a bunch of foolishness. No wonder that mom got all upset because they cussed. They probably did. All kind That's all they got to do is cuss and tell stories. With this whole demonetization thing, I'm starting to wonder what's going to happen to like a poor old Tana Mojo. She ain't going to be able to pay her bills. She already was homeless and got arrested once in this year. What else is she going to do? All of her story times are about that kind of stuff. I've gone off totally on a tangent. I know. People love it and people hate it. So, time stamp, 928. So, anyway, so they give props to Jake and they're like, this really works well. It's a good business model. But we're not doing business and we're not doing legal, okay? We're basically the people out on the streets going to get new talent. What does that sound like to you, okay? Well, I was one of those boys in high school not those kind of boys. Oh, no, ma'am. 
I should have been though, baby. I was hot back then. I was one of those boys that, you know, you want a little bit of something, here's a little bit. You get me, I'll give you a little bit of money and I go get it from somebody else, okay? I was called a middleman. You know what that means, okay? Listen, I was a middleman, okay? But that's what this sounds like to me, basically, okay? Is basically we're dealing YouTube videos. We're a new generation of what has been going on forever. Let's just be for real, okay? And what's been going on forever goes back to almost prairie times, okay? Did you not see it with Little House on the Prairie? I mean, Laura Ingalls Wilder and that old Nelly that was so mean. Basically, that's what's going on. Two different houses. One's doing better than the other, okay? Let's go on. What's the next one? Hippie communal living. This is basically 2017 hippie communal living. No matter. I bet that, baby, I bet they stink a like foul, okay? Like dirty rotten shorts up in that entire place. What's so interesting to me about all this is when you look at all of this stuff, right? Because then if you go into it further, then it looks like these rumble gangs of the 50s, like West Side Story, The Outsiders. Remember I said Pony Boy? Pony Boy! And see, somebody always ends up getting hurt. That should be the lesson, but that's not the lesson, but that should be the lesson. Somebody always gets really hurt and somebody's gonna get hurt in this. Trust my word. Baby, I do these drama videos on the daily. So if you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button below and like this video and come back. And I'll tell you why, because basically, you know those psychic twins out there? I want them to give me a reading. Could you all tweet them and tell those psychic twins to give me a reading? Because I want to talk to my mom. But I'm not lying. I believe in all that shit, okay? But let me tell you something, okay? I'm basically psychic. If you don't believe me, go look in the comment sections of my videos, because I call this shit out two weeks before it ever happens. Somebody is going to get hurt. Somebody's going to go to jail. Somebody's going to lose their gig or this is going to end in physical violence. It is not going to be pretty, okay? So let's go on from the communal living of the hippies to the rumble, rumble gangs of the 50s and the 60s. Then what do we have, right? Well, we have the real gangs of the 70s and the 80s that infiltrated the inner city. And there was a purpose for those gangs. I used to work with gang kids, okay? I used to work with all of them back in the day. The Crips and the Bloods and the Latin Kings and all of them, okay? And I'm, you can't, baby, I know the signs, I know the lingo, I know all of it. And one of the things that I learned through all of that was a respect, okay, for the, the reason why those things existed. Because there was a sense of belonging and it was a, you know, and it was a camaraderie and it was a respect for one another. But the same language that those gangs spoke the same language that we have each other's back. We have bigger backers protecting us, basically. We've got big things that we're doing, okay? All of that language that they spoke is exactly the same language that I heard today and that I hear from the Team 10 team. It's basically the exact same thing. So what do we have, okay? Flash forward, hold on, it gets better. What happened in the early 90s, y'all remember? East Coast, West Coast, baby. All that big whole thing happened, okay? Between Biggie and Tupac and all that kind of stuff. Y'all don't remember all that? Maybe you're not. Y'all want to act like you listen to the music, but you don't know the history. Because if you know the history, it wasn't pretty. And who was caught right up in the middle of it? Faith Evans, and I love her so much. So anyway, uh, but let's talk about all that, okay? What's interesting to me with these girls that are coming along is that this is historically how these gangs work, okay? There's always five or ten guys and one or two girls. What's that about? And you know, somebody commented on my video the other day and they said, do you think that's interesting that there's always just one or two girls in these situations? And I'm like, yeah, because that's how it was with me and my good friends back in the day when we would go to skate parks, because I was looking, those skater boys, fine, okay? But that's how it was. There'd be like six skater boys and like one girl, right? And she wasn't there to skate. And then there was always back in the day, watch West Side Story. I mean, don't we know the story? Look at the outsiders. It's the same way. Have we not learned from any of this? I mean, so basically what this is in 2017 is this is a, a, a clout gang versus Team 10 Rumble, baby. I mean, that's what it is. And it's going to end ugly, okay? But this is my issue with the whole thing. And I will say this. One of the things I really appreciated watching the Faze Banks thing is because Jake Paul and his brother and those fools over there, they have shown their ass left and right. I mean, they really have, okay? You might have wanted to think about taking the video first. He's now he's uploading and taking down videos, uploading and taking down videos. You know, you might have wanted to think about what you were putting out there into the universe before you said some stuff that you can't back it up, okay? So listen, Jake, I know that you, uh, I've heard some things about your dad. Maybe your dad didn't teach you this the way that my dad did. Don't write a check that your ass can't check, cash. Don't write a check that your ass can't cash. That's what my pops taught me, all right? And what that means is don't say something if you can't back it up. Back it up, fam, back it up. So what's, I mean, now we gotta just wait and see what happens with this footage and it's gonna get ugly, right? 
So I'm watching FaZe on there and FaZe is talking all about this and FaZe is like, you know what, I don't remember. I don't, it could have happened, I don't remember. And supposedly Team 10 came over and they spent $4,000 and they were just shelling people, shelling drinks out at FaZe. Baby, don't nobody force any alcohol down your throat. I've been sober for 22 and a half years. I could drink anybody under the table. Nobody's forcing me to have a drink today. And I'm not putting that on him, but I'm just saying it's concerning to me that at 25 years old, you're out in a club, blacked out, not remembering that you possibly assaulted a girl, and uh, that's your excuse for that? I was too drunk, I don't remember. And these are the role models that our youth are looking up to in society. Wow. Like, I am real concerned with this, okay? Furthermore, I thought he took total ownership over the situation and said he would not comment on it or make a video until he knew the truth. And I did respect that. I thought that was very, very cool. I was super impressed with that, right? But let's now get to the lesson in the last minute of my video, right? Timestamp. <laughs> this is a bigger situation than this, all right? Because we have a girl alleging that somebody assaulted her. She has bruises on her. She comes home. Somebody makes a video about her. She's now all over the internet. The paparazzi are trying to film her as she's going like this. Why? I don't know. Allegedly, it's because makeup or whatever. But maybe she just didn't want anybody to take any more pictures of it. Maybe she was ashamed. I don't know, okay? I'm not that girl. And the only person that knows that girl's truth are her and probably Jake Paul. And maybe not even him. Maybe she's the only one that knows the real truth, right? But this is what's really scary about this situation and why it's a bigger deal. There are women, there are men, there are young girls and young men out there that are assaulted on a daily basis, okay? That are terrified to tell the truth because people won't believe them. And here we are recreating this situation again on camera at the expense of views to get to the truth. This is not how you get to the truth. And the lesson that you're sending out to this younger generation is don't talk about it because nobody will believe you anyway. And so we have further, you know, you know, we have further pushed that stigma of what it is like. And so people will further go into the closet and be afraid to come out about the truth that they're being hurt. And that really concerns me. This isn't about YouTube, you guys. This is about a bigger message of leading our youth. And that's what where I'm at all day long. So I love you guys, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.